Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Heretics of Dune by Frank Herbert. So this is the fifth of the original Dune sequence. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... From Dune to Rakis to Dune, the wheel turns full circle. From burning desert to green and fertile land, and on again to burning desert, the cycle is complete. The people of the scattering are returning. Amongst them, mysterious and threatening, are the women who call themselves the Honoured Maters, adepts of an ecstatic cult, and on Rakis become Dune. An ancient prophecy is fulfilled with the coming of the Shishir, Shiana. That's a lot of she's. So, cabbies. So right at the beginning, and I enjoyed this start just because I'm interested in the Duncan Idaho character and the idea of the Golas and like him basically being cloned and cloned and cloned. So the opening line, Teresa told you, did she not, that we have gone through 11 of these Duncan Idaho Golas. This one is the 12th. And right near the start, we have a reference to the fear litany, which I actually have the opening line of tattooed on my arm. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total oblivion. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and wash through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn my inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. And uh, this here was interesting because I would consider myself a liberal, but um, I think this is how like, more right-wing people think of liberals. Only liberals really think. Only liberals are intellectual. Only liberals understand the needs of their fellows. How much viciousness lay concealed in that word, Audrey thought. How much secret ego demanding to feel superior. And we get a reference to the Latin line, uh, quis custodia ipso custodes, who shall guard the guardians? Who shall see that the guardians commit no offences? And uh, that's what I'm, I don't know, I just really like that little piece of Latin. I think it's an interesting, thought-provoking thing. I think it came up in the Discord a few times as well with like the, the City Watch there. And like again, in our world, who will police the police? So here we have um, a reference to some of the previous books and Leto II, who's the great tyrant. So this is the Metamorphosis of Leto II, 10,000th anniversary peroration by Gauss Andor. And this is because um, a lot of, the, well basically every little chapter or every little scene uh, has a quote towards the start of it. And this is the one here. 10,000 years since Leto II began his metamorphosis from human into the sandworm of Rakis, and historians still argue over his motives. Was he driven by the desire for long life? He lived more than 10 times the normal span of 300 SY, solar years, but consider the price he paid. Was it the law of power? He is called the tyrant for good reason, but what did power bring him that a human might want? Was he driven to save humankind from itself? We have only his own words about his golden path to answer this, and I cannot accept the self-serving records of Dar es Balat. Might there have been other gratifications which only his experiences would illuminate? Without better evidence, the question is moot. We are reduced to saying only that he did it. The physical fact alone is undeniable. And uh, that's one of the really interesting things about the Leto the second character. He's like a tyrant, but it's it's unclear whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. He's just a guy doing his, his shit, you know? And just this was an interesting little exchange, um, and I guess yeah, you know, how do you define a child, you know? So, uh, why won't you obey me? A foolish question, child. Why do you keep calling me child? Are you not a child? I menstruate, but you're still a child. Uh, here, the guy who owned this, this book actually had a photo inside it that I guess the person had been using as a bookmark. Um, and there's only one little thing that's been highlighted by them here, but also I thought it was interesting enough to want to share, so. Um, Duncan was not sure what he would know, but now he fully accepted the prize in it. This wilderness must lead to that goal. He recalled staring out at the wild places from the keep and how he had thought to be free here. That sense of untouched freedom had vanished. The wilderness was only a path to something more important. And uh, Duncan says, I hate those clocks. And um, I can see why. So the response to that is, you hate everything here, Teg said. But he took a second look at the clock. It was another antique, a round face with two analog hands and a digital second counter. The two hands were priapian, naked human figures, a large male with enormous phallus and a smaller female with legs spread wide. Each time the two clock hands met, the male appeared to enter the female. Yeah, I would hate that clock as well. And uh, we find some bodies and... Because one of the things I found really interesting about the first Dune book is like the Fremen attitude to water and how water is sacred to the point at which like it becomes a great honour to cry when somebody dies because you're using your waters, you know? So it said, um, dryly puckered flesh had been withdrawn from the wounds, leaving a dark spot to mark them. These bodies were not from Fremen times, Odraid knew. Fremen death stills made ashes of all flesh to recover a body's water. I believe as, as well, I think it might even be said in the next book that uh, they also uh, retrieve potash. And uh, there's a lot of like sexual stuff in this, so they're talking about sexual agility and uh, we get agility. 
Lucilla allowed her tone to convey the full weight of a reverend mother's outrage. No matter that this might be what Seraphia hoped to achieve, she had to be put in her place. Agility, you say? I can control genital temperature. I know and can arouse the 51 excitation points. I... 51, but there are only 51. And then someone's getting tortured. <laughs> and we get, is it wrong what we're doing, basically said. This man is, he is like any other man, Yar said. Shall I attach the special contact to his penis? Not while I'm here, Maitley he said. Whew. Got him crossing my legs just thinking about it. And here at the start of one of the chapters, we get stories of the hidden wisdom from the oral history of Rakis. There was a man who sat each day looking out through a narrow vertical opening where a single board had been removed from a tall wooden fence. Each day a wild ass of the desert passed outside the fence and across the narrow opening. First the nose, then the head, the forelegs, the long brown back, the hind legs and lastly the tail. One day the man leapt to his feet with a light of discovery in his eyes and he shouted for all who could hear him. It is obvious, the nose causes the tail. Uh, that reminded me of the parable or whatever of the uh, the blind or the men, dis yeah, the blind men describing the elephant, and one is like only touched its tail, one's only touched its trunk, etc. Uh, another quote here from the Lady Jessica, who we all know, from Wisdom of Arrakis: When strangers meet, great allowance should be made for differences of custom and training. I think that's very true in our world as well, you know. We get this, which I think is interesting. It just shows you how devious people can be. Scattered along the bar and on the softly illuminated tails were bowls containing crisp fried local vegetables, heavily salted. Such an obvious move to height and thirst apparently offended no one. It was merely expected in this trade. The beers would be heavily salted too, of course. They always were. Brewers knew how to kick off the thirst response. So yeah, Heretics of Dune by Frank Herbert. There were some really good bits in it, although I do feel as though this is the point at which the series has sort of started to go downhill. Started pretty high, then I thought it was really good for books sort of two to four, and then it started to peak, like drop back down again. And um, I mean, that should give you a good indication of what I thought of Chapter House Dune as well. But Heretics of Dune, I still enjoyed it. 3.5 out of five, and you know, cracking on with the Dune series. So there we have it, that's what I made of Heretics of June by Frank Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.